In this video, we're going to start thinking about bonding. Okay, and I'm going to introduce a new term here that we're going to think more critically about as we progress through the next couple of videos. And this is hybrid orbital. Okay, so the idea of a hybrid orbital, just like a hybrid car, is it takes properties from two or more different orbitals and they combine together to create a new orbital, right? In the context of a hybrid vehicle, um, you're taking ideas from a fully electric car and ideas from a normal, like, you know, gas combustion engine um, and putting them together and kind of mixing it together to make something that has the, the ability to use gasoline to drive, but also relies on a recharging battery to make the fuel economy better. Well, that's kind of the idea when we're thinking about making molecules. When we think about the shapes of our S's and our P orbitals, okay, um, bonding patterns are very specific. They have very stringent requirements, okay? Um, every single bond starts with a sigma bond, which is the overlap between at two S orbitals. So if we start with one S orbital, we get the overlap with another S orbital, this type of bond is called a sigma bond, okay? And p orbitals are not alone able to create a sigma bond, right? So there's no way to take two p orbitals and shove them together and make this type of an overlap. It might be tempting to think that it can do this, right? And say that that's a sigma overlap. But the reality is, is that we have left out these two parts of our orbital and there are pieces of electrons there, right? So electrons exist in these parts. So this overlap is not actually sharing all the electrons because we're leaving out these two parts. But in a sigma bond, we are sharing both electrons throughout the entire orbital, right? So the entire molecular orbital. Okay, so the idea with a hybrid orbital is if we take two or more individual orbitals, starting with an S and a P, and we smash them together, then they emerge as a new orbital with multiple lobes that have part S properties, right? It's like taking a electric car and a gas car and smashing it together, and what comes out is something that's partially electric, partially gas, okay? So if we take an S orbital, and a p orbital and smash them together, we come up with what's known as an sp orbital. We took one s and one p, we made an sp. Okay, so this sp orbital has partial s property, partial p property. And if we started with something that looks like these two pieces individually, when they combine together, they make something that looks similar to a p orbital, but it now has the ability to hold four electrons, okay? This lobe of the sp has the ability to hold two electrons, so we can put two electrons here, and this lobe also has the ability to hold two electrons. We started with the ability to hold four electrons, we end with the ability to hold four electrons. We start with two orbitals, we end with two lobes. Okay, um, so that's the idea of a hybrid orbital. Let's think about it in terms of, let's say, um, taking two p orbitals. So if we take an s, a p, and another p, these will combine together to make an sp2. One s, two p's. Okay, we start with one, two, three orbitals that has a capacity of six electrons. What we produce needs to have three lobes with a capacity of six electrons, okay? So when we take an s orbital, a p orbital, and another p orbital, these will combine together to give us an sp2, which has three equal lobes, and each of these lobes have the ability to hold two electrons, okay? An interesting thing to keep in mind as we're working through this is that these lobes 
are separated by 180 degrees. These lobes are separated by 120 degrees, right? So these hopefully kind of remind you of the molecular geometries that we've talked about. These lobes take upon the shape of a triangle plane, so they're trigonal planar. This corresponds to a linear molecule. If we go one step further and take all three p orbitals, so we do an s plus a p plus a p plus a p, then these produce an sp3 hybrid, okay, which will have four equal lobes, so we'll show this one, two, three, four lobes, each can hold two electrons. All right, we started with four individual orbitals, each which could hold two electrons. So we had a capacity of eight electrons. This new hybrid that we produce also has a capacity of eight electrons. And you may be able to guess it's going to adopt the shape of a tetrahedron. So they will, the shape of this will be tetrahedral. Okay. If we try to sketch it out, this is going to be really rough, but we try to sketch it out. We have one going up, one going over. This bond angle is 109.5 degrees. You would have one kind of coming out towards you, and then one that goes back behind the plane of the board. And each of these lobes have the ability to, um, to accept two electrons. So we have two electron capacity here, two electron capacity here, two capacity here, and two capacity here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and stop this video right now and we'll see how this applies to molecules and, and bonding as we, um, as we explore different compounds. Okay, the important take home message from this video is that when we're dealing with molecules, anytime you start a covalent bond, whether it's a single bond, double bond, or triple bond, Every single one of them has to start in an orbital that's at least partially S.